Bienvenidos a Besos de NYC. I'm Patricia Wedding, supporting small businesses, artists, and entrepreneurs in the culture of NYC. Today, I'm excited about introducing you to Moody, owner and founder of Mother Shuckers. He's an entrepreneur passionate about food sustainability and bringing you the best oyster experience possible. You'll be learning about his unique business model and its incorporation of supporting other Black-owned businesses. We'll also be meeting Marcus to learn about what to look for in a quality oyster. As always, please let me know if you like this video by clicking on like and subscribe. Let's go meet Udi. Uh, Mother Shuckers is an initiative to educate everybody about oysters. Um, a lot of people have not had good oyster experiences, and that's because oysters have been kind of set aside as an elitist food. So what I do is I, I source oysters that are from locations and farmers that are doing good jobs of creating uh, oyster experiences for everybody. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, can lease a region of water, a, la a region of the same beach and be growing completely different oysters just because of the tactics that they're using to grow them. In terms of what I do, I'm also very much into getting oysters from different locations, from different places around the world and around the country um, so that people can taste them and understand how far reaching that the, the flavor points of, one, of this one food can be. Mother Suckers is about, and what the inspiration behind it was basically, um, I had been doing fine dining for a while, and fine dining industry uh, kind of inspired me to decide to do one thing in the kitchen, as opposed to doing a lot of different things inside of the kitchen. I decided to choose oysters, and that was the thing I was going to be good at and passionate about in terms of finding work. And after uh, doing work in a lot of fine dining establishments, I decided that I was going to build my own company because I wasn't liking the way that they were approaching. A lot of different places were approaching uh, building out their own kitchens. So it was like I was helping them to build up something and wasn't really getting uh, the treatment that I felt like I deserved. For one thing, oysters is uh, advantageous because it's a front of the house, back of the house position, something where I'm in contact with customers constantly. I'm selling, upselling, and um, informing all the time. I'm educated and I'm extremely fast paced at what it is that my job's requirements are. So in that sense, I felt like, you know, bartender is more equal to what the pay rate should be for an oyster shucker. Obviously, no other establishments are going to feel that way. So I decided to make an oyster bar. And that's basically, uh, I, I wanted to make an oyster bar that would be uh, self-sufficient without having to have uh, necessarily a full kitchen to be a, a, associated with some place where I can pull up to like a bar or uh, an event space somewhere that doesn't have food necessarily and provide the, the food service through a cart. Um, right now I have two carts and I have uh, three, I have four employees, three people that are shucking and uh, one person that's doing management stuff. Oysters specifically uh, something that has been kind of uh, kept as an elitist food. I think like that's uh, to the detriment of not only the oyster industry, but to the food industry. Uh, it's something that should be more prevalent inside of the common person's diet. Um, specifically inside of my community, because that's my community. Um, and also something that people can be educated on in terms of because of not only the sustainability of it, but because of the health properties that come with eating it. Oyster farming for me as a black business owner 
um, is something that I would like to uh, get into myself. But it's also something that's pretty much dominated not by people of my skin tone. Um, I found basically three oyster farmers that are black and I support all three of them. Um, that's part of my initiative is to, you know, uh, inform black people that it is a food for black people and that it's not something that uh, should be looked at as a uh, rich person's food or a white person's food or uh, food that's not for them. Uh, it's a food for everybody. The way how I come up with the different flavorings that I put on my food is because I'm from a black family. So, you know, at Thanksgiving and at Christmas, you're not allowed to show up with anything that's off, okay? If your food is not a success, you'll know about it. Everybody will know about it, okay? So what I am inspired to do when I come to anything with my food is to make sure that each individual flavor that I'm putting out is something that would be Thanksgiving or Christmas uh, acceptable. I want to be able to wow you, not just uh, feed you. I want to I want to feed your soul with the oyster. So what I do is I make accoutrement that can help any oyster and buy extremely high quality oysters so that uh, you can eat them naked or you can eat them with the toppings and you'll be equally impressed or sometimes more impressed, who knows. So I'm excited about tasting these oysters. I'm gonna taste one and hopefully we'll get to meet Marcus who is one of the farmers who provides oysters for Moody. Cheers. Amazing. I've never had oysters like this before. And I'm gonna have Marcus explain why these oysters are so special. But I'm gonna tell you, it's all about the standard and the quality of how they're grown. The texture of the oyster is definitely has more body. And um, and the final touches, the sasson, I would say, is what Moody puts on them on his classic. And then the other oyster uh, choice that we had here was the um, sushi version of uh, finishing touches that Moody put on, on his oysters. And I think they're great because they don't overpower the oyster. They kind of complement it and they're kind of subtle and they meld in with the brininess of the, of, the, of the oysters. So I hope you get to come out to Brooklyn someday and taste some of Moody's oysters because they are really phenomenal. And uh, enjoying them here with jazz and music and Industry City and a glass of wine from Zahadi. It's just perfect, especially for COVID right now that we can't be in any close places and it's really hard to find places to host in Brooklyn, Industry City, and the venue here with Sahadis and the outdoor dining is just right. I, I live on the bay in Long Island, so I live on the Great South Bay and fish a lot. You know, I consider myself somewhat of a sportsman. This is my way of kind of giving back to the bay. I take a lot from the bay. This is my way of giving back to the bay. Um, oysters kind of are filter, filter feeders. They clean up the water. Um, uh, an adult oyster filters up to 50 gallons of water a day, which obviously is very, very good for the bay. What they like to eat makes them delicious, and the conditions that they grow in likes, uh, makes them delicious as well, too. Uh, we have a high um, amount of salinity where we are and great water flow, and so we have a beautiful, beautiful oyster that, uh, that we produce. So what makes our oyster shine is that, A, it is family raised and owned. <laughs> B, the waters that it grows in, again, there's there's high salinity, there's really, really good flow that moves phytoplankton and algae through that the oysters eat. And what makes a really, really good oyster, and the reason that ours stand out is 
the actual process. The process that we use, we tumble the oysters, which chips off the uh, growth. A, 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 a wild oyster wants to grow kind of like flat like this, right? And so if you chip off all this fingernail growth way up top up here, now your oyster wants to grow a cup. All this gets chipped off instead of growing like this, it wants to grow like this. And that's where the meat sits, all that delicious meat that you get from the deep water oyster company's uh, oysters. So a, deep, a nice deep cup, because that's where the meat is gonna sit, but nice, really beautiful, refined edges. Um, a lot of people like really, really clean oysters and uh, the equipment that we're using in order to uh, clean those oysters uh, actually cleans them up to the point where uh, to the point where they are extremely aesthetically pleasing as well too. That's more so than the taste. You know what I mean? We have the taste, right? I don't, me, I don't care what it looks like, period. But the people do, so we do it for the people. You know, clean up the bay and for the people. The oyster shell collection initiative that I'm a part of is called the Billion Oyster Project. Basically, we collect all of the oyster shells, put them back inside of the ocean, and uh, we're making millions possibly billions of new oysters by just collecting the shells that we're making that we're already harvesting at restaurants and putting them back inside of the different in the ocean from through different nurseries different hatcheries that are spawning the oysters basically you know in a few years we should be able to have a fiscal scale and visible amount of oysters back inside of the ocean from this recycling initiative. I don't know too many different recycling initiatives that you can fiscally see what uh, you're going to be having in a short amount of time. So if you're local and you're looking for a good oyster experience, check out Moody's at Zahadi's in Industry City. Or check out his website. The link is provided in the description below. And if you're not local, check out Deep Water oyster company's website to see if they can ship you some oysters. If you like the video, please like, leave me a comment, and subscribe. Stay safe, healthy, and see you soon on the next adventure on Vessels the NYC. This is Patricia Wedding sending you Vessels the NYC.